My name is Amata, and in this Ready Gamer Tech video, I am here with a small combo of things. Now, first up, we have a couple of offerings from AMD, and finally, we have something regarding HDMI 2.1. So, let's begin with the first item on the AMD menu, which is going to be Raven Ridge. Now, obviously, Raven Ridge APUs are now out on mobile, and AMD are now setting their sights on desktop users for their APU. So, motherboard vendors are now shipping out some BIOS updates to lend support to this upcoming family of APUs. Now, as AMD have promised, their AM4 platform is still in use and probably will be for quite some time. So all they needed was a BIOS update from people like MSI and so on to make sure everything's working on that end of things. Now obviously Raven Ridge does make use of Zen cores and they do have increased IPC and efficiency as well as of course newer graphics co uh, cores, excuse me, and they'll have similar enhancements as we have seen with Vega. Which obviously means that they're going to be quite a nice upgrade over, say, Excavator and Steamroller. Now, before I move on to our next topic, we have a list of motherboards that have received the Raven Ridge CPU support BIOS update. I would expect this to increase, but for now, we have the Prime X370 Pro, the X370A, the Prime B350, B350 Plus, B350MA, B thrifty M E, B thrifty M K, A three twenty M A, A three twenty M E, and the A three twenty M K, as well as the R I G Strix X three seventy F Gaming, the I Gaming, the B three fifty F Gaming, and the B three fifty I Gaming. Now, the one last thing we can kind of take away from these BIOS updates coming out, well, rather soon, is that Raven Ridge is probably really hot on its heels. A reasonable expectation would be during CES in 2018, as they have kind of have a history of uh, launching slash announcing their APUs during this particular event. So... That's most likely when we'll see it happen, but of course that is pure speculation from myself, but based on their past history, I would say it's a reasonable assumption to make. Next up, we have something regarding the Ryzen 3 1200. So, essentially what's happened is that a video surfaced of a Russian fellow who purchased a Ryzen 3 1200, and instead of the four active calls that he was expecting, he actually had eight CPU cores active. However, SMT make, making it 16 threads was not active. And before you ask, no, he didn't do some trick with the BIOS or whatever. According to him, it was straight out of the box. And he has actually made a video on YouTube, which of course I will link in the description below, which does actually support his claim. It does show CPU Z displaying eight cores and sorry, instead of the four you might expect. And obviously the benchmark is significantly higher than it would have been had it only have four cores. Now, this isn't the first time we've actually seen this, and it's not even the first time we've seen it with Ryzen either. As you may recall, back in October, that we saw a six-core Ryzen 5 1600X with eight working cores. So, I guess the takeaway is to check out this fellow's video, which again is linked in the description below, and judge for yourself. With that out of the way, let's move on to our final item, shall we? Which is regarding HDMI 2.1. So basically we had an announcement today from the HDMI forum that the release of 2.1 of the HDMI specification is now available to all those who took up HDMI 2.0. I'm going to go through all the features and all that in a second, but as a bit of an overview, of course, it supports higher resolutions and refresh rates and goes all, all the way up to 10K, which is insanity. And also dynamic HDR formats are also supported, as well as bandwidth capability increasing up to 48 GBPS. Now that does come with a small caveat is that 48 GBPS bandwidth is supported by a ultra high speed HDMI uh, cable which has low EMI, which basically means it doesn't interfere that much with nearby wireless devices, and also 
is backwards compatible and can be used with pretty much any HDMI device, or any HDMI device to be more exact. Now I also mentioned refresh rates. Now we do have variable refresh rates, which is you know reducing lag, stutter, and frame tearing. We also have quick media switching for films and videos that eliminates delay. And we also have quick frame transport, which reduces latency again for gaming and of course VR as well. And we have low latency mode, which again is for like free viewing and interactivity. So we have a few different modes that do seem to be applicable for gaming and you can pretty much switch between them to be like, okay, which one works best for my setup, my, my certain television or maybe even a particular game. More choice is always good. Now I have included a link in the description below this video to the website for HDMI 2.1 where you can find all this information and more, as well as a bunch of FAQs, as well as testing and certification FAQs, and just way more detail than what I've gone here. I've very much given you the cliff notes and the overview of what HDMI 2.1 brings to the table. So if you want to get the, uh, the nitty gritty, the details, I highly suggest you check in the description below this video where you will find the link there for your perusal. So, interesting interesting stuff. Excuse the mild stumble there. Now obviously, sporting up to 10k might seem silly now, but uh, I'm, sure for, I'm sure 4k seemed like science fiction, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So, you know, we shall see. And it's always good to get more updates and more features as well as more choices available to us as consumers. So, that's me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated. Do remember to like, share, and subscribe. Your su that really does make, make a great difference and means a great deal. You can tell I've got a bit mixed up between those two sentences there. And both Bowl and I really appreciate it. So, thanks again. Bye-bye.